Pokemon Gotta Catch Em All. That definitely triggered nostalgia and brought back profound memories of your childhood. But have you ever wondered about the backstory of the phenomenal world of Pokemon? Grab your poke balls and buckle your seatbelts as we embark on the adventure of exploring the universe of Pokemon and how this exceptional game came into being. Childlike curiosity paves the way for incredible innovations. As a kid, Satoshi Tajiri loved chasing and collecting bugs. His obsession with these little creatures was so intense it transcended all obstacles and he ended up pioneering the fantastic universe of Pokemon, turning his childhood passion into a legendary virtual gaming world to last an eternity. From getting rejected by Nintendo to becoming one of the most affluent game developers in the world, here's the story of Satoshi Tajiri, the creator of the Pokemon franchise. Ready to rock, Pikachu? Let the games begin! On August 28, 1965, Satoshi Tajiri was born in Machuda, Tokyo. He hailed from a middle-class family, where his father was a Nissan salesman and his mother was a housewife. Stemming from humble beginnings, Tajiri has come a long way. Growing up, he spent his leisure time running after and capturing insects in a rural area that was rapidly undergoing development. His unique hobby earned him the rightful title of Dr. Bug among his peers. His ambition was so vigorous he wanted to become an entomologist. Tajiri noticed that his hometown was speedily turning into an urban region, and unfortunately, many kids would not be able to experience the excitement of bug hunting as he did. This thought-provoking notion ignited his creativity and fueled his imagination so much that he decided to develop games that would render kids a similar experience. As an adolescent, he was immensely fascinated by arcade games. To the point his parents thought he was getting into trouble and messing around with the law in his pastime. He particularly liked playing Space Invaders by Taito, which led him to play other video games. He first got into video games through the game Space Invaders, and after playing it and its video game clones, he was inspired to create his own Space Invaders sequel. In addition, Namco games with a single action focus, like Dig Dug, served as inspiration for him. Eventually, his eagerness turned into an attempt to design his own games. He won a Sega-sponsored contest for a video game idea after taking his Famicom apart to learn how it operated. Tajiri often skipped classes because he was so obsessed with video games and would spend endless hours at the arcade. At one point, an arcade gave him a Space Invaders machine to take home because he was such a frequent customer. Nevertheless, he attended makeup coursework classes and successfully achieved his high school diploma. Here's the crazy part. Tajiri did not go to university, instead enrolling in a two-year technical degree program at the Tokyo National College of Technology, where he majored in electronics and computer science. From 1981 to 1986, Tajiri published and edited the arcade game scene-focused fanzine, known as Game Freak. It was handwritten and bound with staples. In order to provide gamers with winning tactics and lists of Easter eggs, Satoshi founded the Game Freak fanzine. The issue with the highest sales of more than a respectable amount of 10,000 copies describes how to perform well in Xevious. After seeing the magazine in a doujinshi shop, Ken Sujimori, another key figure in the innovation of the Pokemon franchise, became its illustrator. Tajiri and Sujimori decided to create their own games due to Tajiri's growing realization that the majority of games were of poor quality as more contributors joined Game Freak. To better understand the ideas behind Famicom game design, Tajiri studied the family basic game programming package. He then bought the necessary game development hardware. In 1989, Tajiri and Sujimori transformed the publication into the video game studio Game Freak. Soon after, the duo pitched their first game called Quinty to Namco, who successfully published the arcade-style game. Furthermore, Tajiri reviewed arcade games for Family Computer Magazine and Famicom Session while working as a freelancer for the magazine Famicom Hishpin, later renamed Kippen. In 1990, Tajiri came up with the ingenious idea for Pokemon. After seeing a Game Boy and the inter Game Boy communication feature, Tajiri decided that Pokemon made the most sense for the portable gaming device. When he thought about the link cable being able to communicate with two Game Boys, he imagined bugs crawling back and forth, reminiscing over his love of bug collecting as a child. Tajiri suggested that Game Boys could use their link cables to trade collectibles, expanding the connectivity between handheld game consoles beyond Tetris-style competition. 
In a 2004 interview with comedian Shinya Arino, Satoshi Tajiri talked about his game development endeavors and the thought process that went into the game. He said, As soon as I saw the Game Boy's link cable capabilities, I thought, oh that's it. With this cable, you can exchange hats. Something like that would make you go, oh I want that. Everyone who worked at Game Boy thought of their own ideal Pokemon. We had about 300 ideas after brainstorming and we voted for the most popular ones. Now, here's the most exciting part. When Tajiri first presented the concept of Pokemon to Nintendo employees, they were unable to understand it fully. Still, they were sufficiently impressed by Tajiri's reputation for game design that they decided to investigate it. Tajiri was first mentored by Shigeru Miyamoto, who also guided him during the process of production. Miyamoto is a Japanese video game designer, producer, and game director who works as one of Nintendo's representative directors. It took six years to develop Pokemon Red and Blue, which almost led to Game Freak's demise as they went bankrupt, and there was frequently not even enough money to pay for the stuff. Tajiri did not receive a salary and relied on his father's income after five employees left to support himself. You would not believe how much wealth the previously low-income Tajiri currently possesses. Stay tuned to find out what his net worth is now. Game Freak was able to finish the games, thanks to investment from Creatures Incorporated. In exchange, Creatures received a third of the franchise rights. The intro of the novel Japanese game looked like this back then. Between the project's approval and completion, Tajiri helped with the design of two Mario spin-off games for Nintendo, Yoshi, and the exclusive Mario and Wario game for Japan. He also contributed to Sega's Pulse Man in 1994. After the games were finalized and released in 1996, few media outlets covered it because they thought the Game Boy was a long-dead console. Its advertisement looked something like this. Tajiri was convinced that Nintendo would reject the games due to a general lack of interest in the merchandise. Although it wasn't anticipated that the Pokemon video games would sell well, things took a drastic turn for the better. Author Paulo Coelho famously said, when you want something, all the universe conspires in helping you achieve it. Likewise, Tajiri gradually overcame all hurdles and achieved his dream. The series eventually became one of Nintendo's most popular franchises. Rumors of a hidden Pokemon creature called Mew, which could only be obtained by exploiting programming flaws, heightened interest in the game. Tajiri had included Mew in the game to encourage trading and player interaction, but Nintendo was unaware of the character when it was first released. The series boosted Nintendo's flagging sales. The Pokemon creatures rose to tremendous fame in Japan and other countries, inspiring several video games and an equally well-liked card game. Soon after the release of these products, a wide range of merchandise and a long-running animated television series appeared, both of which followed the exploits of a human trainer Satoshi, also known as Ash, and his champion Pokemon Pikachu. In 1998, a run of lucrative feature films started. Initially, a massive 10 million copies of the game were sold in Japan before their export to America was kickstarted. Kids all over the world were mesmerized by the brilliance of the game alike. Needless to say, everyone was swooning over Pokemon. Little did anyone know the franchise was so potent it would soon end up featuring on the cover of Time magazine. In his games, Tajiri purposefully toned down the violence. In this vein, he made Pokemon creatures faint instead of dying when defeated because he thought it was unhealthy for kids to associate death with losing a game. However, like many other intellectuals, artists, and prodigies, Satoshi Tajiri and his creation were not spared from controversies. Although the Pokemon product line was highly praised and financially successful, it remained on the receiving end of harsh criticism for a long while. Many parents and teachers were outraged and protested that the Pokemon games and television series aimed at primary school children were inherently violent. The Time magazine wrote in 1999. The 4-12 year old set can exhibit the most troubling fanaticism about Pokemon. Children have written hate emails to movie critics who have panned the film. After screening and being mesmerized by Pokemon battle after Pokemon battle, an excited little boy told his father that movie makes me want to fight. Not words parents want to hear. It further stated. Some behavior has been delinquent. Other behavior can be criminal. Last week, a nine-year-old boy on New York's Long Island stabbed an older schoolmate in a dispute over cards. Even though the Pokemon had free will and rudimentary language, some adults objected that it implied the message that humans were acceptable to capture and enslave sentient beings. Some even went a step ahead to slander Satoshi Tajiri. 
Time Magazine stated again, Tajiri is an unimposing man, his face composed of sharp angles. His hands and lips tremble as he talks in a soft shy voice. Tajiri is the kind of person the Japanese call otaku, those who shut themselves in with video games or comic books. French journalist Etienne Barral also remarked, The otaku know the difference between the real and virtual worlds, but they would rather be in a virtual world. They are always accumulating things. Other individuals believed that the fantastical nature of the creatures encouraged occult beliefs and practices. Furthering this idea, Time Magazine said, It's not really the violence that scares parents, they've lived with and tolerated intimations of horror for generations. When kids collect dinosaurs, parents blinded by science simply shrug when their children yell in the museum, Look mom! That Allosaurus is eating the Brachiosaurus baby. Nevertheless, arbiters of popular culture produced various satirical works, such as Mad Magazine and the television program South Park in response to adult anxieties and children's cult-like fascination with the Pokemon universe. Tajiri worked on Bushi Siriyuden, Futari no Isha in 1997 after Red and Blue was finished and released in Japan. Tajiri is still active in the more recent Pokemon video games as well. He oversaw the entire process and approved every word for Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. Tajiri credits Shigeru Miyamoto as having a significant impact and views him as a mentor. Because of this, his approach to development closely resembles Miyamoto's. Therefore, the Japanese Pokemon anime's main character is named Satoshi, dubbed Ash Ketchum in the English version. His antagonist is Shigeru, identified as Gary Oak in the English version. Want to know the best part? Surpassing all the hatred and reprimands, Tajiri was recognized by IGN as one of the top 100 video game creators of all time, mainly for his role in making Pokemon a worldwide phenomenon. He was also named one of the top 10 creators of the modern video game market by Electronic Gaming Monthly. Moreover, he was listed as one of the hot 100 game developers of 2008 by the video game magazine Edge. In 2011, Tajiri and Sung Kashu Ishihara shared the Computer Entertainment Developers Conference's special award. According to the CEDC, The Pokemon series has continued to evolve based on Tajiri's game design and is still loved by many users today. In today's age of fantasy, reproduced from fantasy, this kind of solid approach to game design should be a model. Pokemon has been referred to as Japan's most successful export by The Economist. The Economist said in 2016, Two decades ago, Satoshi Tajiri created Pokemon. No children's entertainment franchise has since enjoyed the same success. Tajiri is heavily influenced by old Japanese shows and anime, such as Godzilla and Ultraman. He stated that he would probably work in the anime industry if he weren't designing video games. Satoshi Tajiri is currently serving as president of the video game studio Game Freak. His net worth is estimated at a whopping $5.6 billion. In 2005, he was counted as one of the 10 most influential people who rekindled the contemporary video game market. Tajiri works irregular hours while creating video games, frequently toiling for 24 hours straight and taking 12 hours off. You would be astonished to know that Pokemon is the highest grossing media franchise of all time. Since 1996, it has had an approximate revenue of a hefty $100 billion. Apart from that, it is the second best-selling video game franchise after Mario Kart. Pokemon has endured through the years, starting with the Game Boy and continuing with Pokemon Go on mobile devices that took the world by storm in 2016. What do you think of the remarkable journey of Satoshi Tajiri as he gifted the world with memorable entertainment-filled video games and set the stage for many other Pokemon ventures? How did Pokemon affect your childhood and who was your favorite Pokemon growing up? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Until the next video.